You know what? This hijab is going to bring you more attention. It's going to bring you more problems. And he says, leave it alone. It's okay. Does that make it right? And the woman now, she's like, or whatever ruling, he, le he or she said, man, this imam, now the layman comes mm -hmm. with a little bit of knowledge and tries to educate and they go with the easier way. Are you being sincere? Okay, you see, this raises up a number of issues. Firstly, the fact that hijab brings attention to you. The Quran says that women should wear hijab so that they are recognized as being Muslim women. Can you give, can, can you, I don't want to cut you, can you give us some clear, it says, is this clear in the Quran? Because the, there's some the, people... Yes, the word, uh, the word jilbab is clearly mentioned in the Quran. Jilbab. And jilbab yeah, and jilbab means a covering that uh, goes above your body that you usually wear. I mean, the clothing that you usually wear, you wear something on top of that. Likewise, the word uh, uh, khumr, khumr hinna, is also used in the Quran. And the word khumr is a type of head scarf, which we call in our times hijab. So That's the Arabic what it means. Yes, yes. So the word khumr and the word jilbab, two different words are used for two different concepts. And in our times, we call them, the jilbab is still called the jilbab, the khumr is called the hijab. So the hijab is a covering that goes over the hair. And the jilbab is something that a sister wears on top of her regular clothing that she wears at her house. Have scholars, the most righteous, say the four imams, mm -hmm. can you name the four of them? The four of them are Abu Hanifa, Abu Hanifa Malik, Malik Shafi, Shafi, and Ahmad ibn Hamad. And other great uh, scholars of the past and the present, do they have any split in this Hijab no, issue? There is no difference of opinion in the No difference of opinion at all. It's clear. In the in the schools, in all of the different legal schools of Islam, that a woman has to cover her hair and her entire body except for her hands and face. That is where some difference of opinion occurs. Some are extra strict and they want to cover part of the face as well. But with regards to the hair, the, 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 the minimum, minimum. Is the minimum, and there's no difference of opinion about this in all of the classical schools of Islamic law, that a, a Muslim sister who wishes to practice Islam in a proper manner should cover her entire body except for her hands and face. And that is where the controversy occurs within this small room. Otherwise, the clothing has to be loose, non-transparent, not conspicuous and attractive, and it has to be, uh, as we said, like the hijab and jilbab, has to be covering the entire uh, body of the woman. But the man comes, look, he's got some education, he's a doctor, doctor, DR, okay? Mm -hmm. He's a doctor, he's got 30 years, he's got great character now, mm -hmm. all right? Maybe finished a madrasa, and he says, you know what, like I just said earlier, it's going to bring you more attention, don't worry about it. It's now, in your heart, Shaykh, it's <laughs> in your heart. Allah will understand. Well, all I can say to this is, he is breaking the tradition of our scholarship and he's also going against clear-cut verses in the Quran and Sunnah. We're supposed to worship God even if it means some difficulty. Some difficulty will be achieved, uh, will be uh, uh, gained in that regard. But if the level of difficulty gets to a matter of life and death, a matter of extreme hardship, here is where the Sharia or the religion of God allows you some space. So for example, you know, God says in the Quran, if you're, you know, if you're forced to eat, for example, pork or, or dead meat, and te technically this is not allowed, but if you're forced to, and you have no other alternative, go for it. You're going to die otherwise. Similarly, if you are in such a situation, and for the most part, in most of the countries we're living in, that situation has not been reached. If you're living in such a situation where uh, 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 identifying as a Muslim basically means you're opening yourself up to the threat of death, in this case, yes, completely, what this sheikh says is permissible. What this sheikh says is right. And perhaps in certain countries, you know, for example, in Bosnia in the early 90s or whatever, perhaps in certain countries, if you were to identify yourself as a Muslim at that time and place, you are basically asking for, for, for destruction. In that situation, yes. How about America? I would say America is very far from that. I mean, alhamdulillah, we thank All Allah, person. we praise Allah that America is a very free society, it's a very free country and you know, I mean, I'm living here as well, my wife is wearing the, the scarf and hijab, I'm dressed, you know, like this and have a beard. Yeah, we get some stares and once in a while I've had some, some comments given at me, my wife had some comments given at her, but never, never have I felt physically intimidated, never no. once. And if once uh, one incident happens in all of America. We can't extrapolate that to, I mean, there was a very sad and unfortunate case where somebody gunned down a sister in hijab. You know, very evil, you know, I mean, a, a heinous crime. I mean, how could you possibly do this? A, a mother was walking home with her, with her children and, and she was just gunned down because she was wearing the hijab. I mean, I believe that the perpetrator was caught and he's been sentenced to life uh, in, in prison. But for us to extrapolate from that one incident 
that the hijab has now become uh, you know, uh, not mandatory. That's just, that's just extreme because this is one incident in a society of 300 million people. That doesn't make it a norm. Only when it becomes like a very dangerous situation where there is a physical turmoil and struggle where people are literally out there to kill every Muslim they see. In this case, yes, you may indeed you know, become lax in this regard. Otherwise, America is a great place for Muslims to live and, and we're here and we're able to, to practice our faith and, and live peacefully uh, within the, you know, ob obeying the laws of society and spreading the religion of Islam. I don't see there any problem in, in self-identifying as a Muslim in America. If somebody was to say something to you, shrug at you, don't you, wouldn't you expect a reward from Allah for that? For yeah, up? I mean, it's just a look, it's just a shrug. The people before us had much worse than they went this. through some they went through some very we can't tough even compare times. What, exactly. what they went through exactly you know so it's just if somebody stares at you that's not a reason for you to god says in the quran allah says in the quran that when you stand up to pray they're going to laugh at you this is in the quran you know when you're going to pray they're going to laugh at your movements of prayer does that mean we stop praying does that mean that just because you're going to laugh i mean sometimes i have to pray in the in in, in, the, in public and people stare at you but sometimes people look at you and they're impressed and and, and they're they're really and truly moved to see people worship God in that fashion. So there's a positive and negative uh, aspect of all. What about now that the woman is feeling oppressed, like this is her husband or her brother's or her son's way of oppressing the woman by giving her this nasiya, this advice that's only best for her? Yeah, here we have to really um, take a step back and look at the fact that living, living in the country we're living in, Really, it's not our right once the woman has come of, of age. It's not our right to force her to do anything. She has to do it of her own free will. Okay, obviously when, she, when, a, when a child is a child, the parents have the right to do what they want with them within the realms of the law. I mean, you're allowed to discipline your children, teach them the manners and morals that, that are you require. This is by, by law. Every, every religion teaches, you know, uh, uh, every adherent to a religion teaches their children the, the, the concepts of their religion. But once the child reaches of age, then all we can do in this country is advise. And, and, and continue to advise verbally. We don't have the right really to take the law into our own hand. And, and yeah, do in, in a very gentle and a in loving way. In a very way. gentle and loving way. And, and we advise them and, and we hope that, uh, and, and, and it goes both ways. If, the, if a woman sees a man doing something that, you know, if a sister sees her brother or her father or her son doing something that he shouldn't be doing, she should also advise Does him. the husband ever stop? Does he, okay, I, I told her three times in, in, the, in the last month, does he give up Neither on it? Neither does the husband stop nor does the wife stop. It goes both ways. Keep educating, keep, keep educating, educating, keep trying, keep, keep trying making dua to Allah. Keep making dua to Allah, yeah. Keep making dua to Allah. So there is no exception. There is no expiration date. It's 2007. <laughs> the hijab is finished. No. This is mandatory on every male. Every female. And but, male. But male has a different type of hijab. Yeah. Okay.